Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Lakeshore Qualifier in Wisconsin, checking in team number 8680. Kraken Pinion, by the way, I have Adam and Corey with me. And Kraken Pinion, an incredible machine, once again, that they built. Of course, we'll be doing that full overview, but you got to check out this uh, triple reverse four bar. I got to say that five times fast. Uh, but a great uh, turntable as well, too. A special camera. And we'll talk more about their auto coming up here on Behind the Bot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com FIRST to register your team. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Adam, we're going to start out uh, talking about your uh, triple reverse four bar, and I'd uh, love to talk about your intake as well, too. Talk about what's gone into it and some of the concept about it, too. Yeah, so we decided pretty early in the season during our 30 hour build that we wanted to go with a triple reverse four bar. So what it does is basically how a four bar works is there's like the four bars here and it keeps them parallel while going up. And we have gears on each of the stages right, that, oh, that rotate so up. that it moves Everybody simultaneously. So each stage all goes up at the same time. It extends up about 35 inches in about 1.4 seconds. And we've custom CNC machined uh, these bars on our CNC router that we have like in our room. And we've gone through a lot of iterations with them. They are thin and flat. So we've kind of done FEA simulations and like thought a lot about how structurally we can make them stronger. So we put these returns on each of the stages. They're angled, they're just go build a uh, bracket pieces long all the way uh, down the bars. So it makes it shake a lot less. It's pretty stable here, it's not moving much. It didn't used to be like that because the bars were very flexible. Uh, we did all the like m uh, max deflection calculations and everything and it turns out that these decrease max deflection by about tenfold. So you're not gonna see much bending in these bars. So it's super strong um, and it goes up very consistently. So how we're looking for the intake here is we have this, uh, oh, look, yeah, Corey will do it. We have the horizontal slide mechanism to extend out so we can like finitely place along the, um, along the junction so we can like get right to it. On our controller, we were using the PS4 controllers. We actually have it like mapped out so that Corey can just like drag his thumb along the thing like that and it'll like slowly go in and out. It's very precise. So this is what it looks like. Uh, it's just moving the thumb along the trackpad like that. So we found that that's been really helpful for us. And then what we have here is our gripper mechanism and it's just on a servo with gears. So one servo rotating both of them uh, at the same time. And then we have these two servos here. Something we found out very early in the season is that a lot of the cups are gonna get knocked over. Um, that's just an inevitability. So what we do is we have, when the claw is closed and these wheels are parallel, the servos are able to rotate them and we can pick up those knocked over cones and write them so that we can place them on the junctions like any other cone. On the uh, slides that you guys are using here, from a control standpoint, is that completely manual or do you have any automation uh, um, built in for that? Yeah, so we have a closed button, a fully open button, and a midpoint button. Um, but for more precise movements, yeah, it would be manually. When you were uh, looking at approaching the game, obviously, you know, you got a lot that goes into uh, the arm, the slides, the grip roll, stuff like that. From a strategy standpoint, how did this evolve from your robot in 30 hours robot to where it was now? Like, how do you determine that this was a, a great route for Crack and Pinion to go? Yeah, we did a lot of thinking after the Robot in 30 Hours. During the Robot in 30 Hours, we were a lot more focused on like just going around and placing on every junction. But we found, like a lot of other teams are finding out now, that just cycling for a while on one of the high poles that's nearest to the, the like warehouse depot section, um, that's a very valid strategy. So we're going to do that for probably half the match. Then we're going to go around and try to complete a circuit at the end. And so we designed this to be adaptable to both of those strategies. We have the horizontal slide, so it's able to like go out 
and pick up in the depot and we don't have to move when we're then placing onto the hypo. We can just rotate the turntable, base of the robot doesn't move at all. And then later when we want to go around, it all like fits up nice and neat into a small box. Everything is compressed into well below the 18 inches and it's we're very maneuverable. We're sitting on a 12 by 12 inch drivetrain here so we can get between the poles pretty easily. Speaking about uh, turntables, you guys, uh, I noticed you kept the weight from the Robot in 30 Hours yes, we did. Uh, on it as well, too, but uh, an impressive turntable nonetheless as well, too. Talk to me more about what's gone into that. Yeah, so uh, our turntable, we made this, uh, we CNC, we, well, first we catted it, then we CNC cut this gear out of polycarbonate, um, and then we put a metal bracket on here so that, like, it structurally doesn't bend, it's all good. Um, and then the chain like drives it with these two sprockets on either side. We have two motors so that like it's consistent on both sides. No, it's not like there's not like a lot of applied torque on one side that's like warping it and unevenly moving it. And uh, we've also found that with two motors, it's a lot faster. Um, so and as far as the weight goes, yes, we still do have the five pound weight from the 30 hour build. And we have a lot of a lot more weight under it. Actually, this is a the heaviest robot we've had since Ultimate Goal. Um, and yeah, it's, it's very stable. Uh, since this goes up very far, we had to keep the center of mass down a lot. So that's why we added all those weights. But we haven't had any problems with it tipping for months. Let's keep moving on your robot. Uh, Corey, talk about uh, the special camera that you have on your robot. Uh, and then uh, also what's gone to your autonomous and what are you looking at doing here today from an autonomous and where are you looking at going to the future? Yeah, so on the front of our robot here, we have, it's an Intel RealSense camera. So it uses a technology called Visual Simultaneous Localization and Mapping, or VSLAM, uh, to track its position in space by using subsequent images that it sees to know where it was, and then it uses some math to calculate where it is. And then we can translate that data into our PID function to control where the robot is. and we. We identified early on that, similarly to last year, having dead wheels would work, but due to the load junctions, it would lead to the high potential for damage of dead wheels. And even though they might be more accurate, if they can break, it means that they're not necessarily as good of an option. So we looked into this, and it's been working very well for us. Um, so it allows us, for Autonomous today, we're able to score four additional cones on the low junction plus our preload so five total and allow us to park based on our custom signal sleeve for a total of 35 points in autonomous looking into uh future competitions as well too where does your team want to get by the time you get to like a state level competition that sort of thing one of the things we're definitely looking at for autonomous is cycling in the sixth cone just so that we can get all of them through and the potential for scoring on the high junction so that overall it's worth more points than on the low junction well, 8680, Crack and Pinion, uh, good luck here today, of course, but looking for big things for your team every year that we interview you guys. Uh, so good luck. Can't wait to see what your team brings and uh, incredible robot once again this year. Thanks a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SolidWorks.com slash first to register your team. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.